Asia is a wonderful place. It has a lot to offer the world, but there are also some rather odd things that have surfaced from the region. Here are the 20 strangest things recently discovered in Asia. Number 20. Rain Vortex I think it's pretty fair for me to say that most people don't tend to visit airports for the attractions. Although, if you are one of those people who does that, uh, good for you, buddy. No judgment for me. Who needs an amusement park when you have an airport? The Rain Vortex, located in Singapore's Jewel Changji Airport, is the world's largest and tallest indoor waterfall, standing 130 feet tall. Safdie Architect designed the waterfall as the centerpiece of the airport to attract tourists and turn the airport into an attraction. Again, all you airport lovers, this is where you want to be. Rainwater recycled on-site is pumped to the roof and dropped at 10,000 gallons per minute, splashing into a basement level pool where an acrylic funnel prevents the water from splashing and insulates the sound of the cascade. As if that's not enough, at night the circular walls of the waterfall form a stage for a dazzling light and sound show. Okay, so while Disneyland probably has nothing to fear just yet, it's clear that airports around the world are starting to become something more interesting than just a parking lot for planes. I can't wait for the day they finally bring roller coasters into the airport. That will be fun. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. What they discovered in Asia shocked the whole world. Who's they, you ask? Divers who were exploring the waters near Asia. They found this curious, almost machine-like artifact on a seabed. We have no idea what this is, and neither did they. Do you have any thoughts? Let us know. Comment down below using the hashtag JuicyTopic. Number 19. Cat Island Here's one for all you animal lovers. On Tashirojima, also known as Cat Island, cats outnumber people. Locals believe cats bring luck and fortune, and they generally treat the creatures as if they are kings. Although most of the cats are feral, they are well-fed and well-cared for. Well, I guess the humans have to do their best to not get killed by their feline overlords. Despite that kind-hearted belief, humans haven't exactly prospered on Cat Island. Just in the past 50 years, the island's human population has dwindled from 1,000 to less than 100. As more and more people have abandoned the island since it became overrun with cats, the few remaining inhabitants have become especially protective of their feline companions. Dogs are prohibited from stepping foot on the island to protect the well-being of the cats, not to mention any hapless dog that wanders into a pack of feral felines. There is even a shrine to cats on the island commemorating an incident in which a cat was killed. Obviously, this isn't much of a place for dog lovers but if you happen to have an affection for cats, it's hard to imagine a better place to make your home. Until, of course, the cats finally get tired of the humans and revolt. Probably not gonna be so much fun at that point. Number 18. The Great Banyan it seems that Asia has much more love and respect for living things than most countries in the West. And that doesn't just involve living things like humans or animals. No, it actually goes quite a way beyond that. They love plants too. The Great Banyan, a banyan tree located in India, is among the most extraordinary trees in the world. In 1925, after the tree was struck by two cyclones, the park's superintendent had most of the tree's trunk removed to save the rest of it. A 1,080-foot-long road was built to surround the tree, but it continues to spread beyond the road's boundaries. 
In 1989, the Great Banyan was recorded as the world's largest living tree in the Guinness Book of World Records. Although the garden has a collection of exotic plants from five continents, the Great Banyan tree draws more visitors to the garden each year than any other feature. So there you have it. People are more excited to travel all across the world to see a very old tree than any other exotic plant. I'm sure some horticulturalists would find find that frustrating, but hey, it's a big old tree, you know? How often do you see a tree that's in the Guinness World Records? What, like once a decade? Number 17. Krishna's Butterball the word butterball really sounds like something that will be absolutely delicious. Well, my friends, I'm sorry to tell you that this is not an edible attraction, not even a little bit. Well, you could try it, but you might want to book a trip to the dentist immediately after. Krishna's Butterball, a massive granite boulder resting on a short incline in the coastal resort town of Mamalapuram, India, is a boulder that needs to be seen to be believed. Hindu scriptures suggest that the boulder may have been named after the Hindu god Krishna, who was often found stealing butter from his mother's butter handy. Throughout history, many have tried to move the 20-foot-high boulder, but none have succeeded. One notable try came in 1908, when Governor Arthur Havelock attempted to use seven elephants to move it, with no success. I mean, duh. You can't move a rock with an elephant. You need a rock to move a rock. Get Dwayne Johnson down there. Today, Krishna's Butterball is a popular tourist attraction and a protected national monument. People travel from all over the world, hoping to see the giant rock that cannot be moved. It's a little like the sword in the stone, but without the sword, and with a heck of a lot of disappointment. Number 16. Scarecrow Village in horror movies, the heroes somehow find their way into a weird, unsettling village where something seems to be off. Well, in Japan, there's a village just like that. In fact, it's probably weirder than you could ever imagine. In this village, many of its inhabitants are scarecrows, and the number of human occupants is less than one-third. Tell me that's not the perfect setting for a horror movie. In the Aya Valley, you'll find Quiet Village after Quiet Village, but none will be as quiet or weird as Nagoro. Upon your arrival, you may see no one waving and no one moving around. That's because the place is populated with over 200 life-size scarecrows and 29 humans, who may actually be scarecrows come to life, honestly. Some scarecrows are farming, some are fixing telephone lines, others are waiting for the bus, and others are having a silent chat with each other. The fun part of the game is apparently all about trying to find as many of them as you can without getting turned into one yourself. Well, I guess fun is a little bit dependent on your definition of fun. Some people would find the idea of being surrounded by scarecrows to be utterly terrifying, but hey, if you can look past the possibility of one of them coming to life and turning murderous, it's a real thrill ride of a time. Number 15. Wara Art at the beginning of the 21st century, Japanese farmers faced a serious problem. Tatami mats and other objects were typically made from rice straw, but at the beginning of the 21st century, these objects were increasingly being replaced by man-made materials. So what could farmers do with the leftover rice straw? In 2007, a farming community in Niigata Prefecture turned to Professor Shingo Miyajima of the Department of Science and design at Musashino University for help. Miyajima suggested using the rice straw to create animal sculptures called wara art by attaching the straw to a wooden frame. A local ward in Niigata Prefecture in Japan holds a festival each summer that celebrates the Wara art statues. The large sculptures have been known to reach up to 29 feet tall, though they're usually only around 13 feet tall. I say that like 13 feet tall is the size of a small puppy. 
Wara art is a perfect example of recycling leftover goods for something worthwhile. You have to applaud the ingenuity of those farmers for using their creativity. Number 14. Nail Houses Sadly, gentrification and similar home issues are common all over the world. But in China, it's on a whole other level of problem. Here, there's a growing trend known as the nail house, and it's hard not to empathize with the homeowners being punished for merely living. In China, property developers will often attempt to buy houses to knock them down and build other properties on top of them. However, what happens if the homeowner doesn't want to sell their home? They refuse naturally, so the land developer will offer more money or strive to make a more promising offer. And what happens if that gets rejected? Well, they just build around it. There are hundreds of these nail houses all over China, many of them sandwiched in the middle of new roads or buildings, all because the owners refuse to be bullied into leaving. Thankfully, this isn't a big trend around the world. It seems to only really be a thing in China, but it's not exactly good news, I mean, who the hell thinks it's a good idea to build a busy road around a house? That's just putting the homeowner in more danger. Man, the world just keeps spiraling into absurdity, doesn't it? Number 13. Crab Vending Machine Vending machines are arguably one of the greatest inventions of the past hundred years. Just think about it. The ability to get whatever you want in a matter of seconds, it doesn't get much better than that. But hey, it does. Because here in Asia, they don't just have candy and cola. They also have crab. Yeah, in vending machines. Beginning in August and lasting through October, hairy crabs are the darlings of the Chinese food scene. The crabs obviously get get their name from the hair-like tendrils of their claws, and not, as I had assumed, crabs in wigs. Crab vending machines are a common sight in China. The machines, which are restocked daily, sell crabs for around 20 RMB, that's around 327 US, along with the appropriate side dishes. Chili crab through a vending machine. For those curious foodies, for those curious foodies, those side dishes are crab vinegar and two bags of ginger tea. I mean, obviously, what else would you have with vending machine crab? I imagine some people who aren't from China will get a little squeamish about the idea of getting a crab out of a vending machine. But hey, I'm sure the nutritional value of a hairy crab is significantly higher than the chemical mixture of Coca-Cola. Number 12. World's Biggest Cave it's kinda wild when you really stop to think about just how much of the Earth remains unexplored or undiscovered. And it's even wilder to think about how so much of the world we already know about, we don't actually know much about. Case in point, it appears that the world's largest cave, Sundong, might be bigger than previously thought. Man, we really know nothing. In June 2019, a trio of British divers who assisted in the rescue of the trapped Thai soccer team went on an expedition to Phong Na Ke Bong National Park, Vietnam. During the dive, they discovered an underwater tunnel connecting Sun Dong with another enormous cave called Hong Thong. When it's officially connected to Thung Cave, Sun Dong will add an additional 56.5 million cubic feet of space, again, cementing its legacy as the biggest cave on Earth. Literally any other cave on Earth could comfortably fit inside of it. That's a big cave. This just goes to show much of what we know about our planet is only part of the story. There's a lot of Earth that is yet to be discovered. Maybe there's an even bigger cave out there. Number 11. Iron Pillar of Delhi if you asked me on a typical day if I thought a giant pillar was a world-changing discovery, I would say no. I mean, it's a big pillar, a column. It's not exactly something groundbreaking, is it? What if that pillar had somehow defied the laws of chemistry and physics, though? Well, now we're talking. The Iron Pillar of Delhi is one of the most unusual and chemistry-defying objects in all the world. In Delhi's cute bee complex, sits an 
iron pillar that has withstood time and the elements for over a thousand years. It was originally erected in around 300 AD, when the structure itself was built, and yet there is not a single bit of rust or deterioration of any kind on it. No one knows exactly where the mysterious pillar came from or why it's there, but scientists are more preoccupied with trying to explain how the heck it's never rusted. Many theories surrounding this unusual occurrence, but there's currently no proof of any of them at this point. The only damage to the iron pillar is a result of human interaction, specifically people touching it. To prevent further damage, a fence was placed around it. However, I'm hoping you're not one of those who think touchy-feely equals understanding. Apparently, touching the pillar hasn't exactly helped anybody find answers. Number 10. Kamakya Temple Asia is full of temples that hold a special place in the hearts of believers, but not all temples are built the same. Some temples have an extra special meaning, and the one we're about to see has a very special meaning to a lot of people. Let's find out if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The Kamakya Temple, dedicated to the mother goddess Kamakya, is one of the oldest and most revered centers of tantric practices on Earth. The temple is the site of the Ambubachi Mela, an annual festival that honors the menstruation of the goddess. Uh, yeah, anyway, the temple is believed to have been built during the 8th and 9th century and rebuilt several times. Its final hybrid form, called Nilacha, is unique to this region. It is also the oldest of 51 pithas in the Shakta tradition. Long little known to outsiders, it became an important pilgrimage destination in the 19th century, especially for those coming from Bengal. Okay, well, uh, a temple that's used to celebrate menstruation is definitely unique. I don't think anybody could offer a credible argument to disagree with that one, eh? I think this may be one video where I don't check the comments. Number 9. Great Wall of China Toboggan it would take you 18 months to walk the length of the Great Wall of China, but if you slide down it, you can reach the other end in a mere two minutes. And that's not a hypothetical fantasy anymore. You can actually do it, assuming you're brave enough to do it, that is. If you're up for the wild ride, head to Mu Tianyu, a well-preserved stretch of the Great Wall 56 miles north of Beijing. Here toboggans run down from the top of the wall onto a one-mile slide through scenic valleys and winding forested sections. Are you brave enough? You control the brake and if you choose to use it, you can slow down as the trees whip by and the wind rushes past your face, or you can just go full throttle and pray to any god listening that you don't die. In the Ming Dynasty, these walls helped defend against invaders. Today they provide an opportunity to give you a near death rush. I'm not sure that the ancestors really intended for the wall to be used in this way, but hey, maybe they'd be into it. Who knows? It's not every day you get to enjoy a monument like this. It would be like putting one of those swinging chair attractions on the Eiffel Tower. Number 8. Milking Snails for years, snails were thought to be nothing but slimy pests that plagued farmers in Thailand. But the ever-increasing demand for cosmetic mucin, thought to offset aging and give the skin a dewy glow, has led to the creation of snail farms, and it's here that people, uh, milk them. Yeah, sorry for those of you eating. In Thailand, more than 80 snail farms have been established in one province alone to meet the growing cosmetics industry demand. For the past three years, Thai farmers and opportunistic locals have profited from snail slime as it has become worth more than gold, and the global slime industry has grown to be worth an estimated $314 million. And as for that one lucky province, Two hours east of Bangkok, in Nakhon Heok, 85 snail farms produced as much as 600 liters per month by breeding Akatina snails, commonly known as African giant snails. That's a lot of milk. 
Yuck. Look, it's not the kind of job that you'd want to tell people about. Having to explain that you milk snails for a living is, uh, well, it's not the kind of icebreaker that leads to long-term romantic relationships. But hey, it's a living. I'd do it for $314 million, wouldn't you? Number 7. Java Chicken Church KFC and other fried chicken places are not really all that different from churches for many people. I mean, sure, it's maybe less religious, but you're still worshipping the colonel, right? Well, why not mix the two, religion and chicken? The Jerehayam is an oddly shaped church in central Java, Indonesia, commonly known as the Chicken Church. The nickname arose because its structure resembles a hen to most onlookers. All Although the builder intended it to be the shape of a dove, that's unfortunate. Daniel Alhamzia built the Jirajayam in the 1990s, claiming to have been inspired by God to do so through a dream he'd had in 1989. Though Alhamzia is Christian, he envisioned Jirajayam as a place where people of all faiths could be inspired by the architecture and pay respect to God or chicken. I don't know if anybody could fault the idea behind the creation of the church, a place for people of all religions to come together and share their love of God, but you have to admire the accidental effort to draw in hungry people. That's smart. You get the chicken fans in and before you know it, they're believers. Genius! Number 6. Revived Frozen Fish in the Bible, Jesus Christ was seemingly able to do anything. He turned loaves into fish, water into wine, and he could probably bring people back from the dead too. But hey, what would Jesus be like today? He'd probably bring frozen fish back to life after defrosting in warm water, right? Like this guy. This video, filmed in Japan, features a man placing a frozen fish into a tub of crushed ice. The camera then shows a thermometer that indicates the temperature inside the vat is minus 2.10 Celsius, or 28 Fahrenheit. The fish is taken out of the tub, plopped into a plastic tub of warm water, and left motionless for a couple of seconds. The man is seen reaching into the tub and grabbing the fish by its tail, attempting to turn it under the warm water. And that's when it happens. The fish begins to flap its fins vigorously as it regains consciousness in the warm water. Now let me be clear, I'm not suggesting that this guy is Jesus Christ, but I'm also not not suggesting it because how does a fish come back to life after being frozen solid? It just doesn't seem possible otherwise. Maybe he went to the chicken church. Number 5. Yu Yang there have been many claims of people seeing floating cities in the sky throughout history, but how many of them have been proven or backed up with evidence? The answer for those curious is basically zero until now. Yes, my friends, you're about to witness the impossible. Prepare your underpants accordingly. In 2017, residents of Yuyang in Hunan province shared footage of a bizarre phenomenon that appeared to show skyscrapers and other man-made structures emerging from clouds near a lake. Many who witnessed the phenomenon thought it to be an optical illusion known as a mirage or a fata morgana. But here come the experts to debunk that little theory. Experts explained that radiation fog was the cause of the phenomenon in Hunan. Well, that's more comforting, kind of. Okay, so if you believe experts, there's no such thing as a floating city. But there is such a thing as radiation fog which sounds like an apocalypse is near. I'm not really sure that's going to have the comforting effect that the scientists seem to think it will. I'm already preparing my shelter, and we're five years late. Number 4. Long Tail Boat Racing Welcome to Thailand, home of great food and even better cultural attractions. And one of those great attractions, long tail boat races. They're kind of like your annual boat race, but with different boats. Yeah, that sounds right. A long tail boat is a kind of canoe, but more extreme. Unlike canoes, these things have propellers and engines to make them go fast. 
but like canoes, they've also been known to tip over at even the slightest error in balance, and that can often lead to a pretty dangerous situation where the pilot barrel rolls with the boat until it eventually snaps into. Not fun if you're in it. And yet, despite all these risks, the locals who run the contests won't even consider any kind of safety measures. That means many people end up in the hospital due to this thing going horribly wrong. The long tail is an incredible work of engineering, but boy is it dangerous. It's really asking for trouble, and yet you discover that people really do come from all over in the hopes of competing. I guess the potential for a near-death experience is more than enough to draw people in, eh? Number 3. Rapunzel Village Everybody knows the tale of Rapunzel, right? The girl with the very long hair which could somehow sustain the weight of a fully grown human man. Well, it might be reality. Here in the Huanglu village, residents have decided that shampoo is an unnecessary extravagance, and while it has yet to be tested, I imagine they could also sustain the weight of a human with their hair alone. The Yao women prize their hair above all other aspects of their lives, known as the Long Hair Village in China. This historical settlement is recognized by the Guinness World Book of Records as the world's longest hair village. In this village, women grow their hair up to 6.8 feet long and often keep the hair looking healthy and jet black well into old age. No grays, the secret to their stunning locks, fermented rice water. That's the milky colored stuff left over when you rinse or boil rice. It's been the secret to beautiful hair for these women since ancient times. Hey, it's probably a better use of leftovers than we could figure out. The Red Yao women of Huanglo, who get their name from their traditional red clothing, value their hair so much that, until recently, no one was allowed to look at it. That even includes the women's husbands and children. I don't even know how that would work, but I'm fascinated by it. Number 2. Terracotta Army the Terracotta Army needs no introduction. They're known worldwide as one of the most incredible and unbelievable accidental discoveries. And for good reason, the story is kind of insane. In 1974, farmers drilling a well nearby were the first to notice unusual terracotta fragments. Archaeologists dove into the site searching for valuable artifacts and discovered the largest pottery figurine group in history. The three three pits containing the army feature 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots, with 520 horses, and 150 cavalry horses. The figures also include a whole bunch of non-military personnel, but they always seem to get left out of the count, so moving on. The Terracotta Army is now housed in a museum, making it possible for anybody to experience this incredible firsthand. Indiana Jones would be proud. There's never been anything like the Terracotta Army before or since its discovery. It's one of the most game-changing and unbelievable archaeological finds in history. And the fact that it was accidentally discovered by builders, well, that just makes the story even more legendary, doesn't it? Number 1. World's Tallest Statue We've mentioned this before, but it's always worth mentioning it again. Humans have a bizarre obsession with size. And let's look beyond the obvious for a second, because I'm talking about buildings and sculptures, and yes, statues. In 2018, India unveiled the world's tallest statue, a $430 million tribute to independence leader Sadar Vallabhbhai Patel at 602 feet high. The structure is a bronze-clad colossus built in the western state of Gujarat. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the statue would be a major tourist attraction and a symbol of India's integrity. But some locals say it's a waste of public money. They say it could have been used for something more 
more useful, like providing better health services to people in rural areas. I don't know, man. When I get sick, all I need is a giant bronze statue of a historical dude and I feel better. Was it really important that this expensive statue be built? No. Should the money have gone to something more worthwhile? Probably. Is the statue the biggest in the world? Absolutely. So I guess it's up to you whether you decide this is a giant success or an absolute disaster. Either way, you have to admit it's a pretty unexpected and incredible thing. Which of these discoveries did you find most surprising or shocking? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!